Hey there, Wannab Indie here coming with the seventh video tutorial on remaking Vampire Survivors in Game Maker. So basically what are we doing today? Well, we got those cool flying weapons, but as you can see, they don't really do anything besides just flying around and getting deleted and well, that's pretty much it. So therefore we have to give them some meaning, some context. What I mean by that? Well, they need to destroy the enemies because that's their purpose. So this is uh, our thing. And then later on, we will refine the system a little bit more. So I guess this will be a two-parter. So if you want to join me on this journey, then stick around. This is One Up Indie. I am a developer. So if you like what you're seeing and hearing, then why not consider sharing, liking and subscribing to the channel, of course. Well, to put it into a nutshell, basically what we're gonna do is kind of simple. So we got our three weapons and those three weapons need to have a collision. So basically if we're colliding with any of those dudes here, the enemies, then we are subtracting uh, some of their HP. And then of course, if they have no HP, boom, we delete them. But for now, nothing of that sort is in the game. First of all, the enemies have no HP. So here, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> nothing is happening. So therefore we need to give them HP and best in their parent. And then of course, later on, we can refine that. Um, so for example, they have less and they have more, something like this. This is then up to you how you want to define it. And then we want to give that thing a damage value, which will be in the end of the video refined to a specific one for each weapon. So basically, I don't know, this one will, will be having a damage of three, this has one and maybe this has two, something like this. And of course, once again, you can refine it the way you like. This is the idea behind it. So let's start off with the first thing. We need to give HP and damage to both things. So the first thing I guess is the easiest one is give damage. So basically uh, we have our object weapon parent and then uh, we just give it a nice little variable damage. I guess I did that in the previous video, but we actually didn't do anything. And as you can see, all my three weapons are inheriting. And of course now they just have a damage value of one, which is good enough for us. So what do we do? Wait, basically uh, we just go into second of all in our other part which is our enemy parent and here once again it has just a walk speed so let's give it an hp value uh, i don't know 10. of course um, once uh, the enemies are inheriting them then you can just for example give them more so for example here this is uh, the bulkier dude then he's basically just saying like hey event inherit but I don't know, you give them a different walk speed and HP is, I don't know, let's give it 80. Hopefully this is not completely overkill for this small little project, but this should be good. Uh, yeah, this is definitely overkill. Let's go with 40. So we got those two values and now we need to actually combine them together. This is where the magic is happening. It's just in one weapon parent. So in its step event. So for that we have uh, collision rectangle and not rectangle regular so basically there are two ones rectangle and rectangle list but let's go for list because this one is actually catching all of the stuff which we want to have in uh, in the game so how does it look like well if you just press f1 then uh, this is where it uh, lands you so collision collision fiat list wow that sounds terrible but this is german i guess this is normal thing <laughs> and then uh, we just uh, copy paste the uh, example there because it's all the time in English. Boom. And then what we want to do is object enemy parent. So first of all, we need to collide it with our enemy parent. Then that stuff is getting stored in the list. And then um, these things are basically the IDs of all the things which we are colliding with in our step event. So basically we can hit one or multiple ones. It doesn't really matter. Uh, this is okay. Of course here, these values are completely terrible and therefore we just go bounding box left, bounding box top, bounding box right and bounding box, go on, bounding box bottom. So what are these values? Basically this is the bounding box, the hitbox of all the weapons which is getting read out this is the idea behind it and now 
we can actually use the HP and the damage value which is sitting here. So basically we're just taking our damage value, boom, and our damage value is getting subtracted from the HP pool of the enemy. So HP, but of course of the thing which we are colliding with. And then of course we can actually uh, use this thing which is saying like instance destroy. So if later on of course we will refine that if the HP pool is equal or below to zero then we can actually destroy it and basically this is the first part into a better world and therefore boom um, this is what we do so once again we're just colliding and then we're just if we are colliding with our weapon doesn't really matter which one it is with our enemy so it doesn't really matter which one it is once again because it's object enemy parent and we're hitting all of them so all the children anyway then we are subtracting our damage value from the hp and then if the hp is below boom you're gone so let's check this out and i guess this won't be working <laughs> because let's see it's actually working oh it is but as, as you can see it wasn't working on the slash so what's the deal here it's actually kind of easy because it has its own uh well follow event and so therefore we need to event inherit it and basically what it's basically doing like saying like hey um, the stuff which the object uh, parent in its own step event has please inherit that and then do your own code also here and this is how uh, that thing works and as you can see a pretty neat and a neat system uh, to work with and of course let's do it a little bit more refined because uh, we want to make it a little bit better so therefore we just go into our object player and give it some interesting values so for example we want uh, the damage to be uh, grabbed from the player so here everything is getting stored. Normally you would be doing that into a controller object, but eh. So let's go with three hammer. Let's go with one and here two. And then of course, what we want to do is store them into the things which we are spawning. So let's go for example into our fireball. Say like inherit events. Yes, because we want to inherit. And then say like, hey, our damage is actually not the dummy default of one. It is actually our object player dot damage slash and then hopefully you understand that we that the same thing we can actually do for all the other weapons so let's go into the hammer also inherits uh, then not slash but hammer and then into our slash which is the last one uh, override doesn't really matter because our code is solid here and then we just go slash what did i put here yeah <laughs> um, completely wrong fireball here we go and then later on we can have even more values which are then for good uh, use for updating but now we already got a solid system of course we don't have any feedback and this is where the substitution system will come in and then we will do some optimizing because we want to actually use from the enemies not just the regular sprite but those white ones and they are pretty much the substitution where we just flip flop and then create a feedback system which is then working for us in our favor and is quite optimized already but of course that is for the second part then see you in the next one have a good one one up indie